Checking the headlights and taillights regularly only takes a minute, but makes a lot of difference when you're on the road. If you notice that your taillights aren't working, but brake lights are, there are a few reasons why it can happen. The taillights have separate controls, wiring, and sockets for each of the functionalities. They house more than just taillights. Separate bulbs are used for turn signals, brake lights, and reverse lights. Rather than lumping them together, these modules are split so you can retain some of the functionality in case of a blown fuse or a bad bulb. Brake lights are activated by the brake sensor located underneath the brake pedal. Turn signals are governed by the switch on the left side of the steering wheel. Setting the gear in reverse will activate the reversing white light, and by flipping the headlight switch, the taillights will turn on. Taillights are not working causes and solutions. 1. Bad taillights fuse. The car fuses work the same way as your house fuses. If the load is too high, the temperature increase will cause it to snap and break the circuit. Not only does it prevent a fire hazard, but it's also far cheaper to replace a fuse than the component it's protecting. To check whether you've got a bad fuse, you must first locate the fuse box. In some vehicles, it's located under the hood, while some house it beneath the steering wheel, underneath a plastic cover. You can check the manual for the exact location of the tail light's fuse, but it's better if you start from the top and check each fuse, as you might find a blown fuse that you weren't aware of. You can pull out each of the fuses by hand or pliers, but a much faster way of checking fuses is by using a test light. There are two metal points on the back of each fuse. Ground the test lamp and touch those points. If it lights up, it means there's a current going through the fuse, so it's okay. Once you find a bad fuse, pull it out and read the resistance marking on its side and replace it with a new one. You don't necessarily have to know what the fuse is connected to, but it's a good idea to check the owner's manual and see exactly where the problem originated. 2. Faulty light switch. The light switch controls both the front and rear lights, but it's possible for it to only affect the tail lights. The process of changing the light switch depends on its location. A switch located on the dashboard is fairly easy to replace. The process involves either pulling a part of the dashboard off and disconnecting the cables or pulling the switch straight out. The steering mounted switch is a bit more difficult to replace. Usually it's integrated into the turn signal switch, but even if it's independent, the process remains largely the same. Start by removing the steering column shroud. It's attached through a series of screws and clips, so make sure you've got them all out and work carefully so you don't break the plastic. Remove the bottom portion of the shroud first, then the top. With the steering column exposed, you can use a screwdriver or a hex wrench to disconnect the light switch. Install the new switch and test it before putting the shroud back in place. Once you're sure it's working correctly, you can complete the job by placing the shroud back on the steering column. 3. Bad light bulbs. It's unlikely for both light bulbs to go out at the same time, but if it happens, there's usually an underlying problem with the wiring. In this section, we'll focus on changing the light bulbs, while the following section will be devoted to the wiring issues. To change the light bulb, open the trunk and examine your taillight housing. Depending on the design, you might have to remove some of the upholstery to reveal the screws holding the taillight in place. Once you've gained access to the light bulb socket, remove the old light bulb. The new bulb can be installed by hand, but I prefer to hold it with the protective wrap still in place to avoid leaving finger stains. Once you're done, test the lights and mount the taillight back in place. 4. A wiring problem. The issues with wiring can be difficult to detect, but generally the damage is contained close to the taillight where rain and moisture can penetrate more easily. Lights wiring is fairly simple, so if you notice corroded wiring or a damaged connector, you could swap them out yourself. Disconnect the battery and the connector from the taillight. Use the wire clippers to cut out the corroded part of the wire, then strip one-fourth of rubber off the ends to extend it with a replacement wire. Put the two wires parallel to each other, then spin the exposed wiring together. Wrap it in insulation tape, and you're done. Five. Bad light bulb socket. It's possible that a bad light bulb socket is causing your problems. If moisture penetrates the tail light, you'll also see some fogging and mist inside it. The process of replacing the socket is nearly identical to replacing the light bulb itself. You have to access the back of the tail light, and then it's just a matter of disconnecting the power cable and pulling the socket out. 6. Faulty ambient light sensor. 
The ambient light sensor is a module that detects the amount of light and turns on the headlights automatically when it gets dark. However, when it fails, it can cause a number of issues, like turning on the lights during daylight or failing to turn the tail lights. To reach the old sensor, you have to pull apart the dashboard, which is an extremely challenging task, even if it looks easy. If you've checked all the other causes and you're suspecting the ambient light sensor, take your vehicle to an electrician to get a professional's opinion. To summarize what we've discussed in this video, when tail lights fail simultaneously, a blown fuse is almost always the cause. Check your fuse box and replace any faulty fuses to see whether the issue is solved. Avoid investing in replacement parts, like the lights control switch, or an ambient light sensor, until you're sure they're the cause. Sometimes it's better to take the vehicle to an auto electrician and get the problem sorted out professionally. I hope this video helped. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and follow so you don't miss any of my videos.